Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and this session is all about new features of Crow Path for XPath and CSS selectors. Let's look at the topics to be covered in this session. First, I will introduce the concept of XPath and CSS selectors. Next, I will talk about what is Crow Path and its unique features. And moving further to the discussion, I will be telling you how to use Crow Path for writing XPath and CSS selectors. And finally, I will wrap up the session by demonstrating the usage of Crow Path along with an example. Without any further ado, let's get straight into the module. First, let's understand what is XPath. XPath, also called as XML Path, is a language to query XML documents. It consists of a path expression along with some conditions. Basically, every web page is a document that consists of tags and attributes. And by using XPath, you can query the page document that can be your XML, HTML document, etc. And also to locate particular element, you can write an XPath query that could use elements tag name as well as its attributes. And the query would in turn return the matching element in XML. And every modern browser has a built-in XPath engine. So some of the benefits of XPath are XPath queries are compact and easy to read and type. Syntax is very simple for simple and common use cases. And queries can be easily parsed and query strings are easily embedded in programs, scripts and XML or HTML attributes. And you can uniquely identify any node in an XML document. As I have told you the benefits, let's see the syntax and its terminology. So this is a syntax where the front slash implies the current node and the tag name will be your tag name like input, div, img tag, etc. And add symbol implies select attribute and your attribute name and you have to give the value for your attribute. Simple. Now let's see the two different types of XPath that is absolute XPath and relative XPath. First, absolute XPath. This is a direct way to find the element, but the disadvantage of absolute XPath is that if there are any changes made in the path of the element, then that XPath gets failed. So this is how you have to write from the start of the DOM structure that is starting from HTML, then body tag and then div, etc. Now talking about the relative XPath, here the path starts from the middle of the HTML DOM structure. That is, it starts with the double forward slash, which means it can search the element anywhere in the web page. Okay, so basic example can be something like this that you have an input tag and you have an ID attribute whose value is this simple. Now let's see how to write an XPath query for a simple web page. So first I will launch Google Chrome and navigate to google.com. Suppose say I want to search this search box. So I will try to locate the search bar using XPath. So I'll right click on this and choose inspect. As you can see here, it has an input tag and some attributes like name, ID, class, etc. So what I will do here is I will use this tag name that will be my input. So I'll click on elements and press control F. So as you can see here on clicking on this particular element, the search bar is getting highlighted. Now what I will do, I will write the X path to locate this particular element. Let's see how. As I have told, it starts with double forward slash for relative X path and write input, which is my tag name. And this tag name has an attribute called ID, correct? And the value of ID is Q. So as soon as I wrote this X path, you can see it has highlighted the element which implies it was able to locate the particular element using XPath. So you might get a question in your mind like what is this XPath doing? It says to find an input tag anywhere in the document that has ID as its attribute whose value is Q. So here we are not starting with the root of the document that is from the start point, but we are typing double forward slash and it says anywhere in the document to find an input tag. So you might assume that we might be having multiple input tag in the document. Remember, I had told you in the beginning that XPath consists of a path expression. So this is the path expression. And here we are interested in an input tag that has an ID attribute and whose value is Q. By using this, we are able to uniquely find this element. So if I have to start it from the start of the document, then I have to start writing like start HTML because that will be the first thing. Then I have to start with the next tag that will be head 
and that is the immediate child so i'll be giving head of one then again you have a body that will be again body of fun then again you have your div and that is again the immediate child so i'll give it as div of one and after that again it has one more div class i will write that as well that will be your div of two then again you have a one more div so basically to write an absolute text part you have to start from the start of the html document and that sounds to be very complex and that is why we prefer relative x path over absolute x path so now i believe that you was able to make out the difference between absolute and relative x path and the difference between single forward slash and double forward slash that is single forward slash is used for absolute x path that is where we write the queries like this and relative x path uses double forward slash that indicates to search an element anywhere in the document simple I hope you understood this. So basically this is all about absolute and relative X path. I hope you got an idea about X path. Now let's move further and understand the concept of CSS selectors. CSS is mainly used to provide style tools for the web page and we can use for identifying one or more elements in the web page using CSS. If you start using CSS selectors to identify elements, you will love the speed when compared with X path. As there are many types of locators like ID, name, tag name, link text, partial link text, you have DOM, you have class name. But when you compare all these things, next to ID and name locators, CSS selectors and XPath stands at the top. Why? Because it is very simple and easy to locate the elements on the web page. So if you start using CSS selectors to identify elements, you will love the speed when compared with XPath. We can also use CSS selectors to make sure that the scripts run with the same speed in Internet Explorer browser as well. And CSS selector is always the best possible way to locate complex elements in the web page. So you will be writing it like you will be having an HTML tag. Again, that is not preferred, but if you want to, you can keep it. It starts with hash because that is used to symbolize the ID attribute. Like if it is ID, then you have to use hash. And then you have to give the attribute value that is value of an attribute simple now let's see how to write it so now say I want to locate this particular enter your email text box using CSS selector how will I do that let's see how same thing again even this has an input class it has input type name but it has an ID whose value is login username so I'll copy this and I'll paste it over here that will be the value of the ID attribute and as I told it starts with hash. So on writing this you can see it has located the particular element that does it has highlighted the element simple. So this is how you can use CSS selectors to identify elements on the web page. Now I will do one thing. I will use a CSS selector and XPath in my Eclipse and try to locate the element using Eclipse. Let's navigate to minta.com and try to locate the search box. So it has a placeholder whose value is search. So how will I write? I'll start with double forward slash. That will be my input. So on writing this XPath, it was able to locate the search box, correct? So now what I will do, I will copy this XPath. So I have written a program for XPath that will be first I will set the system property and then I will launch my Chrome driver. Then I will delete all the cookies, set the timeouts for implicit weight, and using driver.get, I will navigate to mintra.com. And to find the element by XPath, I'm giving the value of the search that is the XPath for the search box, and I'm sending mobile phones as a value. And for search icon, it has a class whose value is this. Correct? Then I'm giving search icon.click because it has to click on the search icon simple so run this program and let's check the output so chrome driver launched google chrome navigated to mintra.com now it will enter the value that is mobile phones click on the search icon and here you got your desired output simple so this is how you can use xpath and get the desired result now say I want to locate this Google using my CSS selector. How will I do that? When I inspect on this, you can see it has a button that is this itself is a button 
and it has a class whose value is login Google login button and it has a ID whose value is G plus login for ID. We don't have to worry about anything. We just have to write hash and paste the value correct on just pasting this value. You can see it was able to locate that particular element using CSS selector simple. Now I will copy this and I will go back to my Eclipse and change this. I'll make it as CSS selector. And as it is a button, I have to just click on that. Save this. Now let's run the program and check for the output. Again, it launched Mintra.com and it clicked on Google Chrome. Simple. And it clicked on this icon. That will be your Google icon. Simple. So this is how your CSS selector works and this is all about how you can use XPath and CSS selectors manually. Now let's dive into the core topic of the session and understand crow path and let's see why do we need this crow path for XPath and CSS selectors as well. So crow path is basically a development tool to edit inspect and generate XPath and CSS selectors. Crow path makes it easy to write edit extract and evaluate XPath and CSS query on any web page and saves at least 40 to 50 percent of manual effort in automation script writing. So it will be very simple if you're an automation tester then you have to make use of crow path. It is the highest rated XPath tool as well because it is very useful and it is available for both Mozilla Firefox and Google Chrome as well. So some of the features of crow path are crow path opens as a sidebar tab in the development tools panel. It can be used to get the XPath and CSS selector of the element or any selected node. It generates unique relative XPath and CSS selectors for the elements that are selected. Next it can be used to verify XPath and CSS selectors and allows you to view the matching nodes and their sequential occurrence. And all matching elements in the web page gets highlighted with a dashed blue outline. And if you mouse hover on any of the listed matching node in the crow path tab, then the corresponding element outline changes from blue to orange, indicating that it is the element for the selected node. And next, if the matching element is not in the visible area of the web page, it will automatically scroll to the area on mouse hovering over the matching node. And while writing XPath, if you enter the XPath expression pattern incorrectly or incompletely, it gets highlighted in red. So many things are there, right? So when you look at all these features of Crow Path, you might find why you have to simply waste time in writing them XPath and CSS selectors manually. And it's like just you know you can get the XPath or the CSS selector using Crow Path in just fraction of seconds. Very simple, right? So let's see the working of Crow Path. The first thing will be you have to add the crow path extension. I will show you how next you have to choose your inspect tab choose the crow path and generate selectors very simple. These are the only four steps that you need to follow that is you have to right click on the web page and then choose inspect and then in the elements tab you will be having an option for crow path and you can generate the selectors. Let's see how to do that first just type crow path. Choose the first link for Google Chrome as I'm using Google Chrome. If you want for Firefox, you can use that as well. It's again the same thing. As soon as you click here, you will be having an option called Add to Chrome. As I have already added to Chrome, it's showing me like Remove from Chrome. Simple. Now I will navigate to my Yahoo Mail and say I want to inspect this box using Crow Path. As you can see here, as soon as you choose the inspect, you can see here at the corner that you have a crow path. Correct? So, this is the extension that you added. It is nothing but a plugin. So, this is the extension that you have added. So, you can see on clicking on this crow path, you will get your relative X path, absolute X path, and CSS selectors. So, you can simply click on the extension called crow path that you have added. As you do that, you can see it has a relative XPath, it has absolute and CSS selectors. So, this is a whole thing that you did till now manually. So, you can simply copy this and paste it over here. On pasting it, it was able to locate the element. So, you can paste the same value here as well in your Eclipse and it will retrieve the same result. 
again you can copy the css selector and paste it again on doing that it was able to locate this particular element correct very simple right in just one second you was able to locate a particular element using crow path say suppose i want to do for this create account as you all know this is a link so when it is a link this crow path will also give you partial link text link text CSS selector absolute X path and relative X path Suppose say I want to locate using absolute X path. How will I do that? I'll copy the X path and I'll just paste it that does it is even giving the absolute X path that starts from the start of the document Yes, and if you want CSS selector again, I will be giving the CSS selector if you want to know the link text again I can give this link text as well. That will be your this thing for partial link text as you all know it makes use of the partial element I'll give the partial element again it was able to locate or highlight this particular element so crow path is not useful only for CSS selectors and X path but in case of links it also helps you with the link text and partial link text as well you might note down this point say I want to navigate to amazon.com and inspect some other element for example the search icon Again, click on crow path. In this, it has a relative and absolute text path, but in this case, the CSS selector is something different. So that is the reason it was not able to because it does not have an ID attribute over here. When it doesn't have an ID attribute, then your CSS selector will be something different. And you have your relative text path. You can copy it and paste it, and it's just very simple. But one important point to note down here is. For X path, even if there is no ID attribute or something, it will locate the element. But for CSS selector, if ID attribute is not there, the CSS selector will be something different, like you saw here. Correct? Not just that, you can even locate this particular. Say, I want to locate this, I can even inspect and locate this as well. But if there is something that it is not an absolute child, then it shows like this. If there is no any particular path that is being described or derived, it shows like this. So basically, you can use crow path for most of your X path and CSS. Now, say if I want to do it for Mozilla, how will I do that? Again, I have to give here as add to Firefox for Mozilla Firefox. Add the extension. Simple. The extension got added. So say now I want to navigate to our Edureka website. You can see there are so many courses everything. I want to locate this element again. I'll use inspect So again, you can see it has a input whose attribute is ID and its value is search input You can use this or you can use the same crow path like you have used for Chrome and you will get it very simple So basically crow path is helpful for both X path and CSS selectors and in case of links you saw it is very useful for links as well so this is all about how to use crow path and that's all for the session on new features of crow path for X path and CSS selectors. I hope you understood how to add it and how to make use of crow path whenever you want to locate any particular element using locators like X path and CSS selector. So that's all for the session. If you have any queries, you can comment in the comment section below and we will revert you at the earliest. So that's all for the session. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.